guys and welcome to another interview. Um, this week I'm sitting down with one of my favorite people, Jess. Um, say hi, Jess. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hi, <How's> Sean Jane. <laughs> Um, so for those of you that don't know, uh, I actually know Jess from before we both started yachting, we actually met when we were both working at this weird place called Madame Zangara in Cape Town quite a few years ago, and we've kept in touch ever since. <laughs> but anyway, Jess has had quite an interesting story. She's been a chief student, she's been a person, and I actually wanted to get her on today to find out about her story of how she got into the industry. But before, before we get there, um, Jess, please tell us what have you been up to lately? What are you up to right now? Hi everyone. So lately um, I have been stuck in Cape Town and I've been studying a whole bunch of different things um, just before I go back onto a rotational position. Um, and I have been part-time working at a studio school um, called SYNC, Super Yachting Nautical Careers, a really lovely school based out of Hout Bay. And um, super rewarding to, to be able to teach the girls what to do when they enter the industry. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool. And um, so tell me, uh, what did you do when you wanted to get into the industry? Because now everybody keeps asking the same questions. And I mean, for most of us, we all did the same things. But um, please share your story of how, how you learned about yachting and what were the steps that you took to get in? So um, we were actually at Madame Zangara when I started hearing about yachting. And um, because I was already in the service industry, I felt like it was quite a great opportunity to be able to you know, see the world, travel, and also use my knowledge that I already have of the service industry. Um, and so the first thing I did was uh, found out where I could do some courses. Obviously, um, asked around. Um, I knew somebody that was already in the industry, and she kind of basically said that an entry-level stewardess course is absolutely imperative. Um, and so I did that, and I obviously found out about my SCCW, and all of these things cost a lot of money. So, um, you know, I just carried on waitressing, obviously. Um, and kind of just saw it as an investment, I put all this money into these courses, book my ticket and kind of get ready to go over. And it was a massive risk um, and obviously extremely daunting at the age of 20, 21, I think, when I went over. Um, and yeah, but it paid off and um, a lot of hard work and knowledge. And I basically just asked around, you know, a lot of people what they thought, their advice, can I do it, can we actually get through it with our green mumbers passports you know and um yeah and it's it was really it, it paid off so yeah a lot of hard work and courses yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty scary yeah. at the beginning because you're like yeah. you know you're putting everything into it if it doesn't work then like it's a it's a huge yeah. bomb um so how long did it end up taking you to find your first gig like your first permanent role Okay, so um, when I got over there, it was April. So it was kind of the beginning of the mid season. There were um, a lot of, you know, um, boat shows and things. So that definitely helped to network. You know how everybody says, definitely network, go out, um, ask around, find out the crew agencies and everything. Um, and I think I was quite particular. If I look back now, I wanted to be on a charter boat. I wanted it to be a particular size, particular um, itinerary and everything. Um, and so I got a lot of day work and I did a lot of interviews, but I only landed my first position two months after I got there. And I, okay. if I think about it now, that was most definitely because I was quite particular about what kind of boat I wanted. And I'm uh, at the end of the day, I got a charter, busy charter boat, you know, 45 meters based out of Monaco. So I was happy. So yeah, okay. it's, that's how long it took me. <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting though, because, um, like it's so nerve wracking when you go over and like, you know what you want, but I mean, I, for one, just, uh, I took a lot of temporals in the beginning just cause I needed to survive obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, charter for me personally, it wasn't even that much of a consideration cause I have the tattoo. Um, so when my first private, uh, opportunity came along, I, I took it in a heartbeat. And then only after my first, season or two that I start thinking about what I actually want on yeah. a book that I work. So it's amazing. It's amazing that you stuck to what it is that you wanted and like you eventually got it. It took a little bit longer, but you got it. Yeah, there were struggles there. There was like, you know, the sharing of the French loaf and like the, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was quite expensive. What are we going to do kind of thing, but it was worth yeah. it in the end. And the main thing was day work. You know, day work got yeah. me through for sure. Um, yeah, I got most of my day work through people that I knew and all of the networking I did in my first couple of weeks, I got there for sure. Yeah, yeah the, net, the, the networking is definitely key. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And I think you learn in, in like, an, I think um, 
you know, things like this podcasts and stuff and, and entry level courses, you learn ex how to network because networking can mean um, an array of different things. And so I think networking can also be done not even at a bar. You can be networking somebody, um, you can make, you can go for little runs or there's and so is Facebook groups now in Antibes and in the Caribbean and yeah. stuff where you can literally tap into the yachting industry and, you know, other people that are in the same boat as you, so to speak. So yeah, yeah. it's really, really helpful now as opposed to when, it, you know, nine years ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, back yeah. then we had to like go to the bar because that's where all the people were hanging exactly. out. But now there, there are like little fitness classes, yoga yeah. classes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very exciting now if I had to enter the industry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's so many more options. Um, so I actually wanted to ask, as far as your introductory stu course goes, do you think that when you were coming into the industry with your service experience, that if you had not done that course, if you would still end up landing a job pretty quickly, do you think that that course was really, really necessary? Um. You know, yes, yes, and no. I definitely think that it is. It's there's so much competition out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to say yes because in the course you do learn about ironing and um, about the laundry room and about stain treatments and a lot of those things we don't pick up that stuff often, you know. Um, and yeah. so I think that it, it is quite, it is quite handy. And also in the entry level courses nowadays, you're learning about. Um, you know, what, a, what it's like to live and work with people that are from different walks of life and different nationalities and how to handle people and adversity and why it's so important and the chain of command. And you're not just learning service, you know, in those courses. Um, yeah. But yeah, I definitely think that if I didn't, if I wasn't able to do that course, I would have probably had to take something that maybe I wasn't entirely happy with um, initially. And I probably would have worked my way into the industry anyway, because I think the main thing is, to is the hard work and like the determination and that probably yeah. stands out so yeah yeah it is yeah, still yeah. possible <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh, if if i think about like um a lot of people who didn't end up doing introductory stew courses coming into mm -hmm. the industry for me as well like i didn't um the stuff that that I know now, it took me so much longer to learn in the career than, yeah. for example, for you, like you already learned all the those silly little housekeeping things, whereas I had to learn it like as I was going through. So yeah. that really helps. It's just like a step forward, a step ahead. Yeah. And I, I think, think also with the, sorry. sorry yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> courses, I think the main thing also is, it's funny, you learn how to do everything um, and how like the work list and the checklists go and the monthlies and everything. But when you get on board, chances are that chief steward or that captain are going to want you to know the basics, but they're going to want you to do it their way. And it's yeah. so much better. I feel like you're always a, a kind of a step ahead when you kind of at least know the basics, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, nowadays you can do some of those courses. You can find that stuff online, you know? So it could be easier yeah. and cheaper, more cost effective. So it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me the course that um, you guys are doing at, uh, um, What's it again? Is it Sink? Super Yachting Sink. Sink. Super Yachting Sink. There you go. So the, um, you guys are doing this to your introductory course, right? Yes. Um, that's okay. Kira, the director of the school. Her and Oriel, the other instructor, are doing the courses, and I'm just there part time. But yeah, they cover okay, everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So my next question for you is uh, what words of wisdom can you give to somebody that's coming into the industry now with all these opportunities of? how to network with people and for somebody coming in that don't have a lot of prior experience, what is your best words of wisdom that you could give them? Um, I would probably say to them that if you didn't have much service background and you didn't do a core, um, an entry level course or, you know, and you kind of just really were, like I said, persevering to get that first job is, um, you know, respect and your attitude. You know, if you are, if you are, are um, a team player and you really, we're all striving for the same goal to make the guest happy, um, chances are you're probably going to be hired over the person who's got all the courses and has a really bad attitude. And it's really sad to say, but you know, that's just the way, the way it is. And that's kind of the way I feel like the industry is going is all we really want, all you really want is to work on a boat alongside somebody who has the same kind of understanding that it's hard work we've made many sacrifices to get here we're not with our families or our friends but we all have the same goal and just even if you don't know anything your attitude can you know can kind of pretty much it's paramount it can override everything else 
really. Yeah. So that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. myself. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've personally worked with people who had all the qualifications, but they just didn't have that like work ethic or that yeah. uh, keenness work. to get the yes. job done. Yeah. So it was a bit frustrating because it feels like you're always like having to drag this person along, but uh, yeah, having the right yeah. attitude for sure. So yeah. one more question. This is going to be my last question. Um, can you please share with us like one of the most, uh, either like the most awkward or like the most funniest moment that you can remember from having an experience on board. It can either be interior based or it can be like, I don't know, like a yacht party that you guys had, anything that really stands out that made you laugh or was. Um, okay. So I, I definitely do remember the one time when we were, um, I hadn't yet gotten onto a boat yet. This was my experience for my, one of my first day work options. We had all, we were staying with a bunch of people that had all started the industry together. And we had heard that this big boat was coming into the international dock in Antibes at like 7.30 AM the next morning. And all of us like got up, got like, you know, good amounts of sleep, rest, we were well fed, work in the morning. And we all bolted down to this boat. We're like, they're coming in, they have a charter, they're going to want day workers. Like, that we are not taking no for an answer. This is our rent, like basically. And we <laughs> ran, I remember that run. I remember sweating by the time I got to the boat, which was obviously not the way it should be. But yeah. we all stood there, like me and my friends and the people that I had gone over with. And we pretty much stood there, like lined up, like waiting, like begging, basically, like not, okay, not begging, but basically just like, you have to, you have to take us. And the <laughs> chief engineer had picked five girls to clean the engine room for the five, for five days on this massive boat. And I just remember being like, this is amazing. And we all were sweating and like, we we're like, yes, we all made it. Oh my God. Like, what are the chances that he's going to pick all of us? And the boys got onto the deck and it was just like, wow. We were worked for the whole week. We were fed, we were paid. It was a great experience. And yeah, <laughs> doesn't you always have to compete? They might take you on. So yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So that's really cool. So you got some serious one-on-one -on -one time with the engine room, like right off the Yeah. <laughs> Chief engineer hired us. I mean, like, what? what? But I got day work and it was great. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> that's really so cool. Good. All right. Okay, cool. So, well, cool. thank you so much, Jess, for joining me on this little, this little chat and sharing your experience and everything. I'm sure a lot of people in the group are going to find this super helpful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you for what you're doing for the Yachting community. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Anything I can do to help, it's just awesome. awesome. Okay, cool. See you next time. Cool. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>